Hello and welcome to another video. So the problem is to find the 127th derivative of this function. So remember that when you take the first derivative you say it is f prime. The second derivative is f prime prime. The third derivative f prime prime prime. So what we're looking for is f prime 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 prime. Now let's be serious, nobody expects you to take that many number of derivatives to be able to find an answer because it will take the whole day. What we're really looking forward to is establishing a pattern of what outcome we get. Every time you take a derivative there's something you see, it looks like this thing is repeating. Can I use this repetition to predict what's going to happen the 127th time and that's the secret to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Um, Let's just do this. Um, we have f prime, we have f double prime, we have f triple prime, we have f quadruple prime. Okay, I'm going to write it this way. So you want to see what happens when you take the first derivative, and then what happens when you take the second derivative, and what happens when you take the third, the fourth, the fifth, and see if there's a pattern you can use to predict what's going to happen when you take the 127th derivative of this function. So let's begin. We have f of x is equal to x e to the negative x plus 127. So what is f prime of x? Well, f prime of x, we're going to um, apply the product rule to this. So the product rule to this means we're going to keep the first and differentiate the second. The second is going to be, if you differentiate the derivative of e to the x, or e to the negative x is going to be, you take the derivative of this, or you just repeat this, it's going to be e to the negative x multiplied by the derivative of what's on top, which is negative 1. Okay? Um, that's the first part. Keep the first, differentiate the second, plus differentiate the first, which is just 1, and then keep the second, e to the negative x. And this one is going to go to zero. So this uh, 127 is actually a distraction from beginning because the first derivative gets rid of the constant. So now let's clean this up. If you look at this, this is going to be negative x e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. If I factor out e to the negative x, this is going to be... Um, I'm going to have 1 here. I'm going to have minus x. So it's going to be... Um, let's just do it this way. Negative x plus 1. Will that be? Yes. Negative x plus 1 multiplied by e to the negative x. Uh, I don't want to have my negative being uh, my x, the leading um, polynomial power, having a negative uh, coefficient. So I might want to write it as, let's write it as negative. So if I pull out a negative, it's going to become negative x minus 1 times e to the negative x. Okay, so this is a nice way to present this one. Okay, now let's see what our second derivative is, is going to be. So we're going to come here and write this as negative x minus 1 times e to the negative x. So we can now say that we already have a platform for finding the second derivative, so let's do it. So the second derivative will be f prime prime of x. We're going to apply the same rule. We keep the first and differentiate the second. So I'm going to keep the first and then I'll differentiate the second. It's going to give me negative e to the negative x. Okay, plus, okay, um, this is multiplication. I'm going to differentiate the first and keep the second. If you differentiate the first, it's going to be just negative 1. Okay, the derivative of this is negative 1, and then you keep the second e to the negative x. Now, if we quickly simplify this, let's just simplify it here. This negative will cancel out this negative, so you end up with x minus 1 e to the negative x plus, oh, this is going to be a minus, minus e to the negative x. Now, see what you got. You got minus e to the negative x minus e to the negative x. So, let's factor out e to the negative x. You're going to have... Um, okay, let's write it out. x e to the negative x minus e to the negative x minus e to the negative x. 
So I foiled, I opened this up and you got this. Now see what we have. We have x e to the negative x minus 2 e to the negative x, which simplifies into x minus 2 e to the negative x. And that's what we're going to write here. That's x minus 2 e to the negative x. Okay. So at this point, you see that e to the negative x has shown up again. It's here, it's here, but the minus is not here. Could there be a reason? We don't know. And we have x minus 1 when we took the first derivative. Now we have x minus 2 after taking the second derivative. Does it look like this number is matching the derivative power? Remember, you started out looking for a pattern to follow. So that might be what we're looking for. So let's get rid of this. Take the third derivative with some partial predictions in our minds that, okay, I'm expecting to get this at the end of this. So let's see what that's going to look like. So we have f triple prime of x is going to be, we're going to keep the first, differentiate the second. So it's going to be x minus 2, differentiate the second is negative e to the negative x, okay, plus differentiate the first, this is just going to be 1 times keep the second, that's e to the negative x. Okay, this doesn't look as complicated as the first one. So let's distribute everything so we can see what we get. Okay, this is going to be negative x e to the negative x. And this times this is going to be plus 2e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. It looks like we've got three of these. Okay, so what do we have? We're going to have negative x. And here um, we're going to have plus 2 plus 1, everything e to the negative x. Can we simplify this? Well, this is going to be negative x plus 3, which we can write. See, we can write this as negative x minus 3, e to the negative x. Okay, see, the third derivative has produced a 3, but now the negative has returned. The negative that was on 1 is now on 3, but it wasn't there for 2, but something consistent is that we keep getting this number that corresponds to the derivative we're taking. So this is the same thing as negative x minus 3 e to the negative x. Okay, I can almost predict what's going to happen next because I'm beginning to see that when the power, or sorry, when the, x, the derivative is odd, we get a negative one. When it's even, we get a positive one. It's odd, negative one. It's even, it should be a positive. So let's make a prediction in the fourth one. Let's write the answer here first. So we have, this is going to be, what we have is negative x minus 3 e to the negative x. So our prediction for the fourth one, um, I put a question mark, should be positive, and it should be x minus 4, and then e to the negative x. Now, if we predict this, that it's going to be positive because it's even number and we're going to have four here and this is what our answer is going to be then if this prediction comes through we you can almost say yeah now i know what's going on okay so let's take the fourth derivative in fact you can go ahead and take the fifth derivative if you want but i'm going to stop at four okay this is the fourth derivative and it's going to be the same thing we're going to keep the first differentiate the second. So we're going to keep the first and differentiate the second. Remember, keeping the first, actually, I could have written this as 3 minus x. Instead of writing this, we could have written 3 minus x. Okay, but I'm just going to let this be. Okay, and then you differentiate the second. That's going to be negative e to the negative x. Plus, differentiate the first, I'm going to get negative 1. And keep the second, it's going to be e to the negative x. Let's simplify this and see what it looks like. This is going to be, this negative will cancel out this negative. So we get x minus 3 e to the negative x minus, there's going to be a minus here, e to the negative x. Okay, um, so we can take out the e to the negative x, just write x minus 3 minus 1, put e to the negative x here. Oh, this is x minus 4. Okay, x minus 4 e to the negative x. So our prediction was right. 
So it's x minus 4 e to the negative x. So what you've seen is when it's even, there's no negative. When it's odd, there's a negative. Okay, so what is it? See, the way negative 1 behaves is if the power of negative 1 is an odd number, then it's negative. But if the power of negative 1 is even, then it's positive. So you notice that negative 1 raised to power 2 is going to be 1, but negative 1 raised to power 3 is negative 1. So that's what's going on here. There's going to be a power. So we can actually establish a formula and use the formula for what we're doing. Let's get rid of this. So we can say that the nth derivative of this function is basically negative 1 raised to the power of that derivative, okay? Multiplied by x minus that derivative, which is n, or that derivative that we're taking, which is n, so if we're taking the fifth derivative, this is going to be 5, and then this remains the same, e to the negative x. So we can now write the answer to the problem, the 1 27th derivative. It means our n in this case is 1 27th. So f 1 27th derivative of x will be equal to negative 1 raised to power 1 27, which is an odd number, multiplied by x minus 1 27 e to the negative x. Well, we know the answer to this is going to be a minus, so the answer is minus x minus 127e to the negative x. This is the answer to the problem. But we did not jump to conclusion at the beginning. We had to be sure that what we're doing is consistent, so we did four uh, differentiations and that was able, that was sufficient. So you go to about four or five and then you'll see a pattern established and then you go, okay, now I see this is repeating or this is gonna start again. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.